hello and welcome back to another video. We have made it through January and the days are getting longer, which always makes me feel a little bit more creative. So we are through that month and we are on the road to sunny, endless days. <laughs> um, I mentioned in my latest vlog that for the month of February I will be taking part in Funguary, which is a challenge set up by Fifal over on Instagram. They arranged the challenge to either be done daily or weekly, um, but I opted for the weekly as I thought it reduced some pressure um, from daily challenges can create, which, you know, sometimes they can reduce productivity and learning rather than promote it. And for me, sometimes that can be the case. So I opted for the weekly and I think that will be the best for me. Um, and also I can have three linked, uh, four linked pieces of artwork for future prints and stickers, which I thought would be quite nice. Have a little set there. Um, Fifal also indicated creating characters in her brief for this month's challenge, um, which I'd love to try, but we all know characters are not my strong suit. So we'll have to try that another time. But um, when I'm a little less under pressure by doing it for a challenge, I think I'd really like to try it though. I think her, her little uh, mushroom characters are beautiful and you should definitely go and check her out. It's at Fifal. Um, so let's talk about the artwork a little bit more. I've actually planned this on my iPad initially, which I'm trying to do more often as it's helped me create a nice layout um, and the composition just seems to be a bit better. And then I can just go in with a uh, pencil to paper with minimal rubbing out and scuffing up the paper grain. Cause sometimes you can do that, it can leave ghosting it can just feel a little bit overworked sometimes. And I, I, I think planning on the iPads really reduced that. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy with the layout and composition. I think the balance of colors work really well between the mushrooms um, because the, so, so week one's theme is, is based on spooky mushrooms. So we've got a lot of darker colors, a bit of reds, a bit of blacks. And I think I've balanced those colors out really well by planning, planning for that. So for this week, um, for the challenge we have, an ink cap mushroom, which is definitely one of my favorites. I love that when it starts to decay, it starts to drop that ink, and I just think it's beautiful. And um, we have the Clathrus ru ruber, or rubber, I'm not really sure how you say it, um, which is the little cage-like one at the front left. Um, a destroying angel, which is a very, very lethal mushroom, which is the white front back. Um, we have a Mycena chlorophus, which is actually a natural glowing glow-in-the-dark mushroom. Um, which is quite beautiful, um, quite uh, neutral in colours and a little bit see-through during the day, so that's quite nice. Um, we have a cordyce cord cordyceps, I think is how you say it, which is a parasitic fungi. Um, it attaches to its hosts and actually eats them from the inside out, turning them into a bit of a zombie. Um, so you can definitely see where The Last of Us creators kind of got that idea of fungus being the thing creating the zombies. Um, and I can, I really think that's a great idea and it's actually a bit scary that that's actually a possibility, don't you think? Um, yes, and then we have the bleeding tooth fungus, which is the one on the bottom right. And it has like little red gooey pustules, ugh, awful word, um, which look <laughs> really disgusting. Um, and then finally we have the candle snuff, which is the white one kind of the furthest at the back in the middle. Um, it kind of looks like a bit of a burnt base at the bottom, which I really think is really s suits its name. Um, and it's a really eclectic mix of mushrooms, which, that, which is why I kind of wanted to do it as a weekly challenge as well, just to have a bit of a mix. I think it's really nice. Um, so, Again, back to the artwork. I keep I keep like going away from <laughs> going away from the artwork. I'm not used to doing these voiceovers. You see, it's, I'm trying something new. I think this might be a better way forward. So please let me know if you like it. Um, so this piece ended up being a bit of a mixed media piece. Um, I used watercolor, then coloured pencils, and then a little bit of gu white gouache at the end just for highlights, which I think brings it all together. Um, so I started with the multiple layers of watercolour, which you can see me doing right now. Um, and I've recently discovered neutral tin. I, I never knew it existed and I'm not sure how I never knew. And when I went to buy it, um, basically for Christmas, I received this little watercolour book and it, I've been going through the pages and you do swatches in the actual book, which is really handy. Um, and they, they mentioned neutral tin and I, I was a bit like, what is this? So I went out to buy it 
and I could only buy it in the professional Windsor and Newton collection, not the, the kind of student grade Cotman, which is very strange, but it is an absolute game changer. So it's a neutral tone, hence the name, which darkens colours without muddying them, which, see I always struggle with that, I never like using black because nature doesn't have black in it, it's just dark colours basically. Um, so whenever I added black to darken a colour it would muddy it, whereas this neutral tint doesn't do that and I, I think if you are going to do watercolours, maybe not just dabbling because you have to buy more of a professional watercolour, if you are intending to go into watercolours a little bit deeper um, then the surface I definitely suggest neutral tint, it's a, an absolute game changer. Um, so I I, th I actually think I use that neutral tint in every single mushroom on this piece. Um, even the white destroying angel and I think it's added a lot of depth because even adding it to white or just an off-white colour didn't murk it, it just created it a little bit darker of a colour which is it's great. Anyway, stop ranting and raving and waxing lyrical about a neutral tint now from us. Um, so I actually go in with coloured pencil which you will see very shortly. Um, and I find that that's added a lot of depth and texture. Um, you know that really kind of grainy texture you get from coloured pencils? I think I, I find that amazing. And, you know, I, I think it's just a really nice texture to add to your pieces. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't though. So you do have to play around with that. But I've been really enjoying adding those over the watercolours lately. Um, and... I then used the white gouache that I mentioned for the highlights and that was honestly the cherry on top with some of these mushrooms, um, especially the little red goo one to the right, it really really did make those gooey bits look shiny and look like they are oozing from, you know, uh, from the, the little holes in that mushroom, <laughs> it's very nice. Um, and finally, which you will see later, and I keep saying that, um, the Mycena chlorophus mushroom, the one that glows in the dark naturally, I could not resist adding some glow in the dark to that. So I made a very small batch of paint using my Stuart Semple Culture Hustle Lit Powder, which is the glow in the dark pigment powder. I added that to some gum arabic and some water and created a really thick paint and I actually smeared that over my final um, painting of that Mycena chlorophus and it creates a really nice glow in the dark which I show off a bit later um, and I actually really couldn't be happier with the result I think the painting looks grey and um, I think in my mind I wanted it to be a bit gloomier and I think if I was daring enough I would add a black background I would add some sort of deep colour in the background but I am not brave enough. I'm definitely not brave enough. I don't want to ruin this. I think it looks great as it is. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Maybe I'll try a bit more of a gloomier piece in the future. Um, but I just don't feel like right now is the time to be taking a risk with that. But other than that, I think it looks fantastic. Um, and I'm pleased with it. So I hope you have enjoyed watching. I'm going to let you watch the rest of this video with some really chill music in the background. And... I hope you've enjoyed this style of video, if you have, please tell me in the comments below, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, it really helps me and we are so close to a thousand, I've been working for years up to this, it's been a very slow process and I think um, I just, I'd just i be so happy if we reached a thousand, um, it would be a great little goal for me for this year and to meet it in February would be fantastic, so thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one.